Hi, I'm Lisa Colucci, one of the life coaches at Queen I'm here today with live video coaching as you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse and toxic relationships. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about the feeling I'm not where I thought I would be in life. I'm not I I'm not where I thought I would be. You know, you wake up one day and you're like, what happened? This isn't what I expected for my life. And what do you do with that? That was asked of me by someone, and um, it's actually something I've been talking to someone in my personal life quite a bit about lately, because it um, it's always the dog. She's going to run around and make noise. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's something I am interested in myself, because you hit a certain age in life, and I think pretty much everyone kind of gets that feeling of like, well, what happened? You know, this isn't where I want to be, or maybe not even that, but just like what happened to the life I thought I was going to have, you know what I'm saying? So one thing that I thought of, hi, Darla, Tam, and James. Happy Saturday, lazy Saturday. Lucky you. That's good. Take it. Take it. Um, one thing that I thought of when you have this feeling of, you know, what happened in life and I'm not where I thought I would be is to pay attention to what you feel about change and embrace it learn to embrace change and learn to embrace um letting or rather to let go of fear around change because i mean change is like the essence of why we don't why we end up where we are right we get stuck in these patterns of abusive relationships and then healing from those and then the you know the, the programming that sets in because of them um tam says yeah especially during transitional periods exactly like empty nest right that's when it hits like it ha it usually hits of a feeling when there's some sort of transition happening and you like kind of look up and you wake up from some, from the fog of the mundane and the routine and you look around and be like, what happened? Um, and then when you've had narcissistic or toxic relationships or any kind of loss in your life that creates um, like a depth of feeling that you weren't expecting to have to deal with, you know, anything that creates that like narc abuse can or other traumas in your life. It, it can, you know, suddenly you can wake up from a fog years later and, and realize years have gone by and you don't know, you're not where you thought you would be. So embracing change is one way. Um, another that is um, noticing your thoughts. So a lot of it can be thought, um, uh, transforming your thoughts, it's noticing the, the would have and should have type of thinking. So that, <clears throat> excuse me, so you're not blaming yourself for the patterns in your life per se. Hello, Eileen. Nice to see you. We're talking about the feeling of um, how did I get here? This isn't where I thought I would be in my life. So um, I'm on to number two point, which is notice the would have, should have thinking and um, find a way to restate it so that you are not putting blame back on yourself, but simply observing that you had this life and that certain choices that you made led to where you are. Not all of them. A lot of it is, like I said, when you've had a toxic relationship, of course, we know we're not entirely responsible. We become responsible only when we are healing and we realize we can move forward with our life, right? So that's what I'm trying to get to here is take responsibility for noticing the would have and should have type of thinking and work to um, restate those. Those are limiting beliefs. Those are limiting thoughts. And we don't need those. We don't need those when we're healing. And we certainly don't need those when we're thriving. People who thrive tend to see their past mistakes or see their past patterns as um, things not to repeat, not things to feel to ruminate on, you know, so let's work toward that. And another one is grieving the losses. Sometimes you just, you just got to feel and grieve the loss that you've had in your life. And sometimes that can take time, right? Eileen says, it's just what I need today. I should on myself all the time, right? <laughs> it's, I think we all do to some extent, but you notice in areas of your life where you, where you do well, you don't do that. And in areas of your life where you're kind of stuck or you feel stale, that's when that comes in. So if we look to the places where we succeed or where other people succeed and, and see the patterns they have, we can find ways to change our own patterns to lead us where we want to be. Because the whole point of this today is where do you want to be? If you're not where you thought you would be, where is it you want to go, right? That's the, the ultimate question. Um, or it's a, a, an ultimate question. Tam says that may be one reason I'm still blank slate in the future. The would have, should have limited beliefs. It could be, it really could be, you know, we, we limit ourselves. That's the whole point of evolution and evolving and, and thriving is that to learn to stop limiting yourself so that you can move forward. 
so grieving the losses, um, sometimes that can, you know, sometimes we got to set a time limit with that. And sometimes we got to just let it happen. I think we have to use our discernment and realize, okay, I've been grieving this too long and it's part of my pattern now, or I never did grieve it. I need to grieve this. You know, we have to pay attention to what we're feeling and, um, kind of start, I think, applying all the other things while the losses are being grieved, you know, start looking at the other things I'm talking about or your own things that you think about. And that's what I'm going to ask you. What ideas do you guys have for what the things I'm talking about or this, just this thought of I'm not where I thought I would be. Um, so number four is uh, feeling stuck in the pattern of thought, finding ways to open your mind and your heart to something new and different. That can be really scary and really hard, right? We or, or we think we're doing something different and all we're doing is repeating the same thing in another way. And I think that comes down to, again, the limiting beliefs, like it, then the limiting thoughts and the I can'ts and the I shoulds, right? It kind of, these all tie together, but really that feeling stuck in a pattern of thought um, requires new thought. It requires, a lot of times it requires new doing, new, you know, meet, make a new friend, start doing a new thing. Um, look for the possibilities in life is what this point is. Look for the possibilities, not the limitations. And if you do have limitations, like, you know, I have physical limitations, I'm not going to go climb in a mountain, but that doesn't mean I can't do other things. Physically, you know, it's finding, knowing where your actual limitations are versus where you are putting blocks in your own way. That's what I'm getting at. And then the fifth point, and you guys can talk anytime. <laughs> You can say anything you want because I don't know if I'm making sense or not. But um, the fifth one is to realize this is an opportunity to discover yourself, okay? To, to discover new things and to deepen your connection with the world around you. You, When you're stuck in the pattern of this is not where I thought I would be or with a thought of this is not what I thought life would be. Um, like a lot of times we grieve this because we have this thought and it has an association with grief and sadness because we have lost a relationship, right? We've lost an illusion for most of most people here have lost an illusion of what they thought the relationship would be. Um, but that is it's still just as real as a real relationship, right? It's just as real as if it were real. Because to our emotions, it was the thing we were banking on, right? We put time and invested ourselves and our hearts into something and we lose it. And then, you know, then you wake up and you're like, what were those past however many years? right? Or months or whatever it was. But usually it's years. People wake up years later and say, well, what was I doing? It was it was all for nothing. And here I am. And hello, Deborah. And, you know, when you when you have that thought, it, it loops you back into the grief of it all. And the, and, the, and the losses that you've had because of the toxic relationship and the time and energy spent. Changing the belief to realizing that this is an opportunity to discover yourself because now you're free from the thing that binded you most to the dark and the toxic, right? So deepening your connection with the world around you, to me, that's a really simple and deep way in a sense. So like it's, it's a way in without having to go through this grief emotion process, through your, th your thoughts and beliefs, you can just start noticing the world around you or like things that you enjoy, um, finding things you enjoy. And I'm talking little things like the way the grass feels when you walk barefoot, that kind of thing. Um, as you deepen your connection with those things, I just shook the camera. Sorry. As you deepen your connection with those things, you begin to have a life. Basically, all of this is because all of this, I, this is not where I thought I would be, is a stuck feeling that makes, at least it makes me feel like I don't have a life. I just am a machine in this, you know, looping cycle of my own creation somehow, right? Or that's how I feel. Or a creation that was put on me by the programming that was put in there by other people. It's And so to get out of that, I mean, we really have to start discovering what it is like little children, you know, what it is you enjoy and what it is that you can connect with in life. Um Eileen says, having trouble recognizing what is my thought and what is someone else, what someone else has told me. I feel like I let someone else's voice become my own. And that makes me stand in my own way. Ooh, that's a really good point. <clears throat> I'm going to finish this thought and then I'm going to answer that. So what I was talking about with, you know, discovering the world around you, the, the, the main point is this is not a loss. This is 
you becoming found. Okay. So that's the whole point. This is finding yourself, you know, this is finding your way in life and taking the, I am not where I thought I would be and making it, where do I want to go? And how can I manifest that? And how can I create that? Okay. And it's like, it's not even that you need to have concrete ideas because I know what Tam's going to say. I don't know. (laughs) Right. And it's not that you have to have concrete ideas. It's that you have to have a mindset of, of, or I think, you know, that having the mindset of where do I want to be? Where do I want to go? What things do I want to manifest in my life? And what energy do I want around me? And what, um, what thoughts do I want to consume my day? I can tell you that I'd say 75% of my day is filled with positivity anymore. And that's because of this. It's because of that thought and the things I'm telling you and other, I mean, millions of other things, but it's because I'm creating it, not because life is actually very rosy around me right now. You know, um, lots of stuff goes on and it, it rolls off differently. So this is the point, you know, you're not lost. Hi, is that, what is that? Karina, Karina, sorry, can't read the bottom one. <laughs> so Eileen is having trouble recognizing what is your thought and we are, and what is someone else has told you. So you can't distinguish between the programming and your own beliefs. Okay, so, well, I would say anything limiting you is not coming from you. And I would just leave it there, even if that's not true. <laughs> because honestly, what do you want for yourself? Do you want to, knowing what you want for yourself is a place to start. Let's say that. What do you want? Do you want to say, um, have a peaceful an atmosphere around you? Okay, maybe that's something. I'm just making it up. <laughs> or tell me, excuse me, <clears throat> tell me something you want so we could talk directly to you. So I can talk directly to you, not we. There's only one person here. <laughs> um, uh, tell me what it is that you, like a thought you have that you feel like is limiting you. And or I'm just going to keep talking to you do. But like, if you think I want, I know what I want. I want peace around me and there's all this chaos. Because usually we start with what you don't want and you start with the the limiting belief and then you work backwards and be like, well, what do I want it to be? And once you know what you want it to be, you can just pretty much assume it's programmed in there, the negative, because either you've programmed it in there or somebody else has. And it doesn't really matter who put it there at this point. What matters is how to get out of it. Whoops. Um, Getting out of it and through it, you know, so that you are not... A kind of a slave to it, right? So I think um, anything limiting, anything limiting that's standing in your way can be worked the same way. Change the thought, change the pattern, recognize it, see where you're beating yourself up over it and, you know, affirm and change, change the limiting belief. If you hit me with one, I'll give you an example of what I mean. So, um, cause that's helpful to me to have an actual phrase because the ones I make up tend to not make sense. (laughs) um, Yeah, so let's see. No one's talking. Do you guys, anyone else have any questions today or want to talk about anything else? Because I'm just going to ramble on a bit otherwise and then end short if no one is here or no one wants to talk. Um, Gosh, let me think. Okay, I know, right? It's hard once you're on the spot. That's what I'm doing. I'm like, let me think of my limiting beliefs, but those aren't mine. Those aren't hers. Those are mine. Um, One might think something like, um, well, I can't do that because I'm not good at that. Or, um, well, um, every time I try and do this, you know, something will happen. Something will happen because it's, and it's my fault because I'm not, I'm not good enough or I'm not, um, uh, gosh, I'm just struggling with the, <laughs> I'm struggling with the negative. I'm kind of liking that I'm struggling with the negative today, but I am. Um, James is thinking too. We're all just sitting. Let's just sit and think. Teasing. <laughs> anyway, um, okay. So, what do you guys think of this? Who else feels stuck? Anyone feel stuck in that feeling of I am not where I thought I would be? You know, I mean, when things happen in life and you get and you have that feeling, because sometimes it's not just narc abuse, it can be anything, it can be a loss, it can be um, a job, a job, a loss of any kind, someone's death, a job, uh, um, being having to move away from friends, anything that creates this gap in your life where it isn't the thing you thought it would be. I think we get so stuck in pattern thinking as if we're supposed to know some 
grand plan for what our life is that when we look up and we realize we're not where we thought we would be, it's shocking. And really that should be a freedom feeling because where you're not where you think you would be means you got somewhere to go, right? If you are where you thought you would be, it means, I don't know, like, I don't even know what that would mean. (laughs) I've never experienced it. So I don't know. Someone has that feeling. Let me know what that feels like, but maybe it can be good too. But I feel like this one, especially for us as we are healing and working to evolve and not just sitting there waiting for healing to happen. Cause that, as we know, that's not usually the case, right? Um, that's when we can see the openings instead of the limitations. And Phoenix says, I'm in, internally stuck for a long time. External circumstances are forcing my hand, forcing your hand. I know. And see, that's another point. I'm here to tell you that my internal life and my external life do not match right now. They do not coincide. Okay. So what's going on on the outside is not what's happening on the inside. What I'm doing is creating change from the inside. Okay. And I believe that will change the outside. And if it doesn't, then my inside's still pretty darn good. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's, um, I think that we can only work where we have control to work. And the only thing we can control really is our ability to focus on ourselves and focus on the lives we have, the internal chaos, internal, I read chaos, internal peace, not chaos. Um, James says, oh, I know, limiting belief for me is that a woman won't like me if I were to talk to her. Okay. And do you think that's your belief or do you think that's programmed there? It doesn't really matter, right? Because the point is, there it is. It's in you. That belief is in you. So, um, you're not sure if that's a good subject for this. It's it's fine. Anything that's a limiting belief to to illustrate what I was trying to illustrate would couldn't come up with my own. So what I would do with that if it were me is I would I would tell myself things about it. Um, your friend pointed it out last night that you are afraid to talk to women because um, you're afraid they won't like you. they won't like you if you do. <clears throat> is that what you're saying? Um, I would talk to myself about that because, I mean, there's a deeper, a deeper belief behind that probably or a deeper, uh, a reason for it. Do we need to go there? Sure, that can help. But no, we don't need to. So we can say, okay, okay, James, you can say to yourself, that, that makes absolutely no sense. It really doesn't, okay? Because every woman won't like you anyway. Because Every woman is not, there's so many people and so many types in the world. There are people, there are people who will completely hate me and there are people who will adore me. It doesn't, it, there is no, there's no knowing, right? And there's no, um, it comes down to assumption, right, James? We know this, right? It comes down to the assumption that we're assuming what other people think. And once we know that, we can change the belief. We can say, I don't know what they think. I'm just going to talk anyway. I'm going to be myself and be happy anyway. And the point is, the happier you are, the more likely people are to enjoy being around you, whether or not they um, want to, you know, go further than that is, you know, who knows. But (laughs) so working with the beliefs logically like that, like it's absolutely impossible that every single woman will dislike you if they talk to you. It's totally impossible because there are so many people in this world that it's, it's impossible that they would all like logically, it makes no sense. Right. So, I mean, I would, start working with that belief, changing it to something like, even though it's uncomfortable to talk to strain to new women, I'm not going to assume what they think. And I know I'm a good person and people enjoy me. It's okay. Even if you can't find, the more you tell yourself this, even if you can't find proof in your life right now, it's because you've been trying to prove it based on your negative belief. If that makes sense, you've been trying to prove to yourself that you are worthy based on a belief that is toxic to yourself. So if you start basing your life on beliefs that are positive, you will start finding the proof and the evidence that you're looking for. Almost guaranteed. I can't guarantee, but I'm pretty sure that works for me. (laughs) Um, Let's see. Phoenix says me too. Outside is chaos. Right. So I work the inside. When When the outside is chaos, I work the inside. I work myself. I work on the things that I'm talking to James about, the things that I was talking about earlier, you know, all of this stuff about embracing change. That's the big one for me. Embracing change. Change is not death. Change is not, I mean, it is, but it's not, you know what I'm saying? Change is not the end. And 
it's it's just change. It's just it's like getting stuck in this where I'm not where I thought I would be. Where the heck am I? Feeling is a lack of allowing change. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, let's see. Eileen says, I know that I have strengths and weaknesses, but rather than lean into those, I continue to try and flip those due to constant messages that I should be the opposite in validating, in validating parent voice. Okay. So kind of what I was talking about with James, you know, working with, um, to continue to try to flip them. What do you mean you try to flip them? Do you try to just like tell yourself the opposite? Um, I'm trying to understand what you're talking about here. Tell me what, tell me a little bit more. Like you have, you know, you have strengths that was so you try to flip them. So if something is a strength, you are, you make it a weakness. I'm not super clear. It's always hard when you just have a message and not actually a person to talk to, but that's okay. We have what we have. Uh, James says he was like, dude, you're already being negative. It, that's what I'm talking about. Right. Just, it's just a default. It's a default. It's a default. Get rid of it. Okay. You don't need to be negative. Honestly, you're not a, you're not a, you're not a little dark rainbow, my friend. You're a good guy. So, um, find the, the part of yourself that, that knows how to relax and be with yourself. That's the point. Be with yourself. I'm here to have a good time. I'm here to enjoy myself and I'm going to talk to people. That's enjoyable for me and enjoy it. And if they don't like you, that's their problem. Honestly, because that's ridiculous. So I don't, that to not like someone who's being positive and friendly is pretty ridiculous. And it's well, it may just not be a person's. Maybe they want something else. I don't know. It's not always personal. That's the other part. Is that we take it all personal, and it's not always personal. So, um, Brian, hello, James. He says, James, I watched this great video this morning that helped out, and he gave you a link. Excellent. Um, and James has many defaults, don't we all, right? Um, Brian says, real social dynamics. Search YouTube for real social dynamics and you'll figure out community. Um, Phoenix, time is change. It, time is change. Change has always been tough for me, says James. It's tough for me too, I understand. Um, Eileen says, I am the opposite of my parent. She's organized and quiet. I'm ADHD and hardworking. Okay. Um, so are you saying that because you're opposite, you feel like um, you it's conflicting? Like you do something your way and it feels conflicted because the parent voice that's in your head is saying you should have done it another way. And so then that makes it a limitation for you. Is that what you're talking about, Eileen? Um, James says, it was fun to actually meet new people. Good. See, so you did have fun. Superstar. Hello. Why is self-actualization put as a pinnacle and not ebb and flow. Say more. I'm not sure what you mean. I understood the ebb. It's okay. I read typo. I just am not clear what you mean. Why is it put as a pinnacle and not as ebb and flow? It is ebb and flow. It's totally ebb and flow. I think it's self-actualization is not a thing. It's a process and it's a it's multiple things. I mean, you can self-actualize. You can become very self-aware, self-fulfilled. Um, in one area of life and completely miss the rest of your life. So it's, to me, it's, it is ebb and flow and it's layered and it has nothing to do with attaining. It has to do with evolving and continually evolving your own life. So is that what you're talking about? Um, if not, tell me what you're, what you're asking there. Um, James says, but um, as I'm shaking her hand and she says her name, I forget as soon as done. What do you mean? You forget what? What do you forget, James? Because you get anxious and you start worrying about what she's going to think of you. Is that what you're talking about? Um, Eileen says, parent is disappointed. We are different and discounts any and all achievement because they are not like, because they're not like her. Okay. The parent inside you does, the your internal parent or the actual parent, probably both, right? Um, I try to be like her, but just sabotage myself. Okay. So you need to be yourself, my friend. You don't need to be like her. I mean, we can take strengths from other people and learn to acquire some of those ourselves. But to do that to please or conform or um, change ourselves to uh, appease another person is never going to help you, right? And the whole point of your life is for you to live it, not for other people to dictate it. So um, 
learning to reparent yourself means finding an entirely different voice in your head to speak to yourself with the way you need to be spoken to. Like, what did you need to hear? And tell yourself that. Don't tell yourself what you've heard before and the thing that's limiting you. Tell, Listen to it and be like, oh, there, I did it again. Okay, what do I actually need to hear? What I need to hear is, hey, that was a really creative way to do that. That's I didn't think of that. You know, something like that. I would have done it totally differently. And look, we got the same result. How interesting. Things like that that are... I mean, you don't have to gush at yourself and, and you know, well, some of us do, but, you know, you can just do it in a simple way and start changing that voice little by little so that it becomes your authentic voice, not the voice of other people. And I'm telling you, anywhere you're sabotaging yourself, it does not matter where it came from. You can change it around in that way. Um, James says, no, I'm just terrible remembering names unless I repeat it a lot. That's okay. A lot of us are. I am too. I cannot remember a name. It's really hard. Um, uh, I, so I don't think that, I don't think people judge you for that, especially if you say, forgive me, I'm terrible at remembering names. You know what? I would say half the people I say that to say, oh my gosh, me too. You know, or, or that's okay. My mom's that way or my sister, they, people can relate to that. If you just own it, that's not a big deal to forget names. It's, I think you get hard on yourself, maybe James, over things that are actually things everybody does. But the problem is once you get hard on yourself, then you become negative. And then once you're negative, people see the negativity rather than the real you, right? So it's that. Um, the Phoenix says, new internal parent voice has made the biggest shift, right? It's a big shift when you start doing that. It takes practice, doesn't it, Phoenix? It takes a lot of practice. You have to catch it. You have to first feel it like you're noticing, Eileen. Notice it. And then instead of beating yourself up or having it, do something about it and make the change and realize I can do something about this. This is a place I can control my life. I can control aspects of my life, right? And I can make change. So James says, probably so. Well, I mean, if your friends saw the negativity going on, then there probably was some negativity going on, right? And they said it to you, which means, okay, you can recognize it and you can kind of work with it and change it. And I'm glad you had fun anyway. Um, Phoenix says, you got this. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Anybody else have a question about anything we're talking about or anything they want to talk about today before we're done? Otherwise, we'll end up pretty soon here and get on with our Saturdays. What are you guys up to today? Anything exciting and fun? Boundaries. Boundaries. James is on the boundaries. Talk to me, my friend. What do you want to talk about with boundaries? What about them? Boundaries. Um, did you see my question? I did not even see you here, Freedom Lee. Hello, I missed you. Let me find you. There you are. Hello. Okay, sorry. Wow, I missed a whole chunk. All right. Okay, it says, hi, Lisa and everyone. I wanted to know how to stop thinking of the damage ex narc is causing my family. They are in a fog and I have no contact with them. I don't think all of this, I don't think of this all the time, but let's see. Okay. Oh, you have what when you do, you have anxiety. Okay. How to stop thinking of the damage ex narc is causing your family. You don't have contact with your family, but you know they're causing damage. Is that what you're saying, Freedom? Um, I'll let you answer yes or no, and then I'll answer that. And Phoenix says boundaries saves lives. That's right. James says, I'd like to start with my own boundary. Okay regarding what kind of boundary what do you where do you feel you lack them I mean everywhere you could say but name I don't know one to three things that you'd like to make changes using boundaries with and, and tell me what you're doing now and then maybe you can see where you need to make change um like I've never talked about before I don't have great boundaries more of a wall oh or like I have talked about before right okay so instead of placing boundaries you put up a wall and then that stops you having to place boundaries, right? So, <clears throat> no, I think I'm getting what you're saying. So instead of um, being open to another person, say, you just put up a wall. And then because you put up that wall, there's no need to place boundaries. Is that what you're saying? And instead, you would like to place boundaries so that there isn't this wall between you and the other person. So there's communication and you're being respected rather than, you're forcing respect with a giant brick wall in front of them. Is that right? Let me know. <laughs> yeah, but not, oh, I know it's not always. And obviously it's not always. I'm talking about what you're talking about. Though. 
<laughs> right? I'm trying to, I'm, I'm illustrating it as a giant point when I know it's not your whole life. Depends on the situation. Okay. But is that what you're asking? Like how to change from when you do that to putting up boundaries instead? Okay. Yes, he says. All right. So I, I would look at why I'm putting up this wall when I'm fearing. You know what? If you recognize you're doing it, then you can um, probably sense why you're doing it. You know, you could probably get a sense of, well, it keeps me safe because blah, blah, blah. You know, whatever the whatever the situation is. Maybe it um, keeps you from rejection. Like, um, like when I met the group at the bowling alley, it was easy. It felt safe. Why did it feel safe, James? We went into that with a different, I mean, I'm totally putting you on the spot and you do not have to talk about it and I'm not going to reveal it, but you went into that with a different attitude. So what do you think was different about that situation? At a bar or a nightclub or grocery store, it doesn't feel safe because they are, um, I was scared as F. You were scared, but what was different in the bowling alley than when, what intention had you made in that, in that, in that experience that was different? Because there's nothing safer about a bowling alley versus a grocery store. Except, yeah, it's actually less safe because they have balls rolling around and stuff. But, you know, what was safer at the, at the bowling alley, do you think? Um, I think it does come down to safety. I think that you're right. It, it's a safety issue for you to put up a wall, right? It keeps you from, it keeps you from hearing the, the rejection or the, um, any form of negativity that might come from the other person that isn't the thing you wanted to hear. So sometimes we have to be, we have to learn that it's okay to hear the things we don't want to hear and learn how to cope with those. Like if it's a rejection, sometimes it's not a rejection in the sense that you're being rejected. It's just a, um, it's a, it's not the enthusiasm we wished to have had in the situation. Right. And so the, in those cases, you can give back to yourself the enthusiasm that you needed and relax because Wait, let's see what you're saying. Um, it's very hard not to assume or judge intent or facial expressions. Yep. Um, can the wall thing be an empath safety thing too? It's kind of a, in my opinion, it's a poor, poor coping skills mechanism. And I think we all do it to some degree. So I'm not calling you out here, James. It's a, um, I think it's a uh, defense mechanism in anyone because I mean, narcs do it too. It's not just empaths that do that. Everybody, everybody, I think, can put up a wall in a certain situation. Some of us don't have any, and then that's a whole nother. That's a whole nother need for boundaries, right? Um, but the putting up, I think that it's, I think it's that you're not potentially coping with your own feelings about what it means when the person isn't giving you the response that you wanted. Does that make sense? And so again, we go back to the assumptions. So we're assuming a, a response that we think we want instead of letting a person be authentic in front of us. And what we want is to be accepted for ourselves, right? And to be accepted and cared about and listened to. But then sometimes we put up this wall and we can't even let the other person do it. Is that making sense? So I think you're onto something with the assumptions and I think boundaries together. I think you're on a roll here and you're on the right track, James. Uh, Diana, hello. It says actually bowling alleys, there's often drinking in some of the newer social night alleys, right? I don't think there's lots of alcohol use in the grocery store. <laughs> allowed us. Well, he went, he had a particular instance that, um, in, in a bowling alley that felt really safe with a group of people. And, and it was, I don't think it was a, you know, a party kind of situation, more like a gathering. So, um, that's what we're talking about, but you're right. The grocery store is actually safer, um, in a sense, uh, no, my intention was to try not to judge intent or make assumptions. Right. Exactly. That's the point. You went into that meeting. Oh, I got it. Sorry. Close to the mic. You went into that meeting with an intention. You didn't just go there. Your intention wasn't, I want to go there and meet a bunch of people and I want to be the life of the party. And I want, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you may have wanted these things, but that wasn't your intent. Your intent was to go make friends, not make assumptions and not judge other people, other people's intent, right? Having that that you're holding on to changes the perception you have because if you're working to let go of assumptions, then you can't be making assumptions at the same time and actually believing them. You can still make them, 
But then there's doubt, like, oh, wait, I'm trying not to do this. You know what I'm saying? Instead of all the focus, it's like stage fright in a sense, otherwise, because you go in with no intent. If you go on stage with absolute intent, like I'm sitting here talking to you with absolute intent and I don't feel super nervous. If I have nothing to say and I'm on here going, hi, let's just talk, that's super anxiety provoking. So it's, I think it's similar. Like I, I can't even see you guys' faces. I have no idea what you're thinking and I'm trying not to judge your intent or you know, judge your, whatever you're thinking of me. Right. So it's, um, it's that kind of thing. Like I'm, I'm here with a focus and I'm here with my own intent and trying to help people, you know, with their own lives. So does that make sense? I mean, not that you're going to go to the bowling alley for that, but your intent to let go of assumptions and to let go of judgment is what I think what helped you. So I think do more of that, James, or other things that you notice that you're doing. Um, because I think that wall happens when you start judging. Maybe? I don't know. Um, freedom. Yes. The only contact I have with my youngest daughter. Oh, I only have contact with my youngest daughter. I'm grateful for that. I think of all he's done to me, there are no there are no limits. The only way to get through it is to tell myself one day I will see, see it through. Right, right. So you want to know how to let go of what he's done to them. It's hard, you know, because you're talking about your kids. Um, I need to go back and reread what you wrote here. You said how to stop thinking of the damage he caused. I think you think forward, my friend. I think you think forward. I think that that loss and grief will always be there in a sense. It's it's a loss, right? It's a huge loss and there's a huge amount of grief. It's frustrating. It's unfair. It's all the things we can sit and dwell on, right? We can sit and dwell on the anger that this causes, or we can move forward. And I think it's what you're what you've been doing is to keep looking at your life as it moves forward and be living the best life you can. Because there's no battling these people when it comes to this sort of manipulation, right? And the more you are open to anyone coming back to you. You know what I'm saying? The more you keep up with the anger and the, not the anger, because the anger is going to be there, the continual thinking. So the more you continually think backwards, the less open you are to the future, right? And the whole point is if you want any opportunities that do come up in your life to connect, it to be open. You don't want to be met with resentment and bitterness toward them because they're kind of victims of this too, right? So that's like the best I got right now for that. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Diana says, I saw a card once that said having a family is like having a bowling alley in your mind. <laughs> and that related to me at the time being programmed, manipulated and controlled and knocked down and picked back up again and knocked back down again. Heck yeah. Um, James says, Diana, I agree. But even before I drank, it all felt safe, right? Because it was a Christian group, because I think James, you walked in with your own intent. I really do. I think that made such a difference for your day that um, I'm curious if you can do more of that and, and report back. So you have, see if it's right that that intent changed things. Um, Diana says, I missed the beginning. So I'm out of context. Just my experience. The beginning, I was talking about the feeling of I'm not where I thought I would be in this life. I, You know, you wake up one day and go, where am I? I'm not where I thought I would be. You look around and this isn't the life you thought you'd have. Talking about that. I was talking about that feeling and ways to work with it and change the perception of that into one that is all is not lost. This is just me being found. Okay, so I talked about you can go back and watch, I guess you could, I talked about five different ideas and ways to start making some shifts around that. Um, superstar, I am working on boundaries and how and now I see them as semi -pers. Okay. Semi permeable. Is that what you're saying? What, what do you mean? Semi permeable. Oh, oh, so they're not as rigid. Were you one with rigid boundaries? I, I don't understand what you're, what you mean here. Let's see. Eileen, I never used to judge other people's intent until I learned about narc abuse. Now I find I actually do think about what someone else wants for me. There's the opposite. And you see, Eileen, that's where like two different types of people have, there's two different answers because we have to be discerning. We have to learn to be discerning and learn to think about 
somebody, what somebody else might want from you when you meet them. And that's part of learning to see red flags. And it's part of learning to not be walked on and not be used. So, I mean, I think some people take it too far and it limits them and other people have to learn to do it. It's, it's really interesting, right? Um, James says, if so, wow, I need to create intent for everything. Honestly, intent is the beginning. Intent's already there, James. You don't need to, you just need to intentionally allow it, like add it into your meditation. What is my intent for the day? And make them positive. Because intent's already there. Everything you do, there's an intent already in place. It comes before thought. Intent comes, it's like part of the emotional thought process, right? Um, what do I want? What's, what's going to happen? How do I stay safe? Um, depending on who you are, you know, the, the intent's already there. It's just learning to um, work with it. Um, everyone has an agenda, says Deborah. Everyone does have an agenda. Even good people have an agenda. Heck yeah, we all want something back. We all want something for ourselves. So it's learning to be discerning about who wants something and is also giving. That's um, Diana says, so it's about being consciously aware. It's so it's about being consciously aware and bringing the intent to the surface. Yes. And being aware that if your intent is not serving your life, that you can make a change. I mean, ha most of the time we don't know what our intent is, right? We just go in. And then sometimes I think that's that feeling of, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Or um, feeling of putting your foot in your mouth sometimes when you catch yourself realizing you had an intent that is maybe not what it should have been. I don't know. That's what it is for me. I got that feeling of like, oh, I just put my foot in my mouth because that was not what I meant, you know, or maybe it was. And oh my gosh, I really should have had thought about my intent before I entered into this particular situation. Um, I think it's also what gets us trapped up with narcs is we don't enter into new relationships with intent. We enter or we do, but our intent isn't clear. It isn't one of it's one of filling our um, emptiness, rather one of finding a fulfilling life, if that makes sense. There's a total difference in that. So intense, huge, and it's big. And it's kind of great because you can, it's another place where you can do the things I was talking about in the beginning of this and learn to embrace the change in life, which is creating new intent for yourself or um, focusing on the intent that is more positive and leading you to where you want to go right? And then you don't wake up and think, how did I get here? Why this life isn't what I thought it would be. You wake up and think, oh, I'm creating a life for myself, right? So <laughs> it's in finding these little things like this, I think that can start to make really big changes. Fairly, I mean, James's example was great, because it happened in one swoop, the bowling alley was like one thing. And it made a huge difference. And that was super exciting, because it showed him that he has the power to make change in his life. Did it change his external life? Probably not too much. But the internal changes come first a lot of times. It's not changing the outside and, you know, gathering new things around you. It's changing the inside so that the outside can reflect it. And um, even when there's chaos, Phoenix, even when there's chaos, right? I understand that. I mean, I know you go through a lot. And even when that's in place, even when that's not in place and it's all chaotic, it can... Um, it can begin to make change because like I said, even if the world around you is falling apart, if what's happening on the inside is strong and positive, it's way less affecting you to have when the world is falling apart because the world does fall apart and then it comes back and then it, it's just life, right? Anybody have anything else today? You know, it'll be okay. You, exactly. You know, it'll be okay. <clears throat> you know, it already is okay and it never wasn't okay. It's just that things are happening. And of course, there's sadness and there's grief and there's things that happen that won't knock you to your knees, but it gives you a place to stand back up from. Um, have you ever worked with anyone experiencing bullying, mobbing in their neighborhood or community without support? What do you suggest? I have not personally. Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I would have to think about that. Um, is this from a, like a smear campaign or is this just like, obviously it sounds like one person starts something and everyone follows. Say a little bit more maybe and I can give some ideas or I can think about it and come back with something next time. I will be back Tuesday at 4.30 Pacific. Um, this too shall pass. Exactly. Um, Diana says, okay, thanks. I appreciate your wisdom. You're welcome. I just don't have a whole lot for that. I'm sorry. I don't. 
I get on one mindset and then like the practical stuff I have to, Ooh, let me think. <laughs> and I don't want to answer that without thinking because that's um, very difficult. Um, Freedom Lee says, thanks, Lisa. I used, uh, used to have extreme anxiety, but I use techniques and knowledge I've learned through this community to help. I need to be grateful for the little things I have changed in a positive way. That's right. And there we come back to intent, right? Um, we do need to learn to be, it's not so much you need to learn to be grateful. You will become grateful when you start to recognize the small changes that you've made. It sort of opens gratitude up for you. Um, it helps with building more, it attracts more of the same to you when you recognize the things. If you keep ignoring the positive, the positive is not going to keep growing. Does that make sense? Um, have a great weekend too, Deborah. Diane says, smear campaign related to legal situation, divorce, and real estate mobbing. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. Um, maybe write me more about it later and so I can dig a bit and ask some questions and then I'll come back with it. I'll try to open with it or bring it up on Tuesday. Um, you can write me privately if you want to or post it here or whatever and I will... Um, try to get some answers for you. And like, what are you actually like? So my questions would be, what are you doing about it or what's happening? Um, what are you doing to cope with it now? Um, what's it affecting? Um, trying to think what you would answer and how I would ask again. Um, what, um, um, I guess that's it. That's all that I would ask. What's it, what's it mostly what's it affecting in your life and where it, can you see places to regain control over which aspects and where where do you feel out of control in um okay okay cool answer those when you have time and, and i will come back with something on tuesday or thursday depending on when i get some answers for you <laughs> um i think that's it anyone else have anything else today before i head out you guys go have a weekend anyone doing anything fun i'm not <laughs> I'm doing nothing. And that's fun. Um, and it's oddly sunny here. I know some places are being snowed in. So it's a very strange w winter. Um, anyway, now I'm talking about the weather. So <laughs> I think that means it's almost time to end. Okay. Anyone else? Are we good to go? I think I'm going to head out, you guys. You take care. And think about this embracing of change and letting go of fear of change. because. Think it'll get you farther than if you fear it <laughs> and i will talk to you guys later you're welcome james goodbye have a good weekend everybody i will be back on you're enjoying the rain oh nice um soak in some sun yeah we'll see <laughs> you're welcome eileen um i will be back on tuesday at 4 30 pacific and Thursday at 4.30 Pacific. I haven't picked the third time yet. It may be Wednesday and it may be Saturday. I don't know yet. That's the mystery time. <laughs> so um, thanks for joining me and take care. Bye-bye.